I need one more monitor. <laughs> I don't have enough monitors around me yet. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ginger Snaps, another live event with your famous artist, Ginger Cook. Ginger, come on down. Hey, John. Uh, thank you for the big shout out. I want to say hi to everybody that could join us live. We always appreciate the fact this is a global live global. broadcast around because, the world yes that's that's pretty much what global means there <laughs> yeah you got it so and well okay so what's going to happen is on wednesdays we're going to do something different they're called ginger snaps in other words i get letters all the time and emails um questions about certain art things and if i get enough of them or i see enough of the examples coming back from my personal art coaching where i see this as a uh, issue that we could resolve okay maybe explain better sometimes if you're having trouble painting something if I can explain it better then there's no trouble okay this becomes really easy all right so what we're going to talk about today is snow a uh, snow on trees and I'm going to do a little cottage and I'm going to do some pine trees I'm going to talk a few things about that and particularly if you live in an area where you've never seen snow or you haven't been around snow in a while you guys who are just knee deep in it or chest deep in the snow you're going oh please really somebody lives where there isn't but there are people who've never seen it or haven't been around it enough to really think about that show snow has color it has shadows it has rules there's rules just like uh, there's rules in spelling so let's let's cover a few of these while we're painting we're going to do a little eight by ten canvas nothing too large just something a little exercise if you want to turn around and make this bigger take a little more time with that that would be fine and we'll also be answering questions john is a uh, little as our moderator he's the other half at gingercooklive.gallery He's the one that built that magnificent website and, and does most of your correspondence except for the personal art coaching. So if there's a question you would like me to answer during a break or when we're drawing or just when we're chatting, put, type it up in big letters, call caps, shout at us, okay? So we'll see it and we want to, let's just get started. The first thing we're going to do is cover an 8x10 canvas with some ultramarine blue, a little tiny dosmine purple. I'm going to mix this up right now with a little palette knife. I'm going to come over here to the palette knife over here on my wax paper palette, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Uh, that's red shade. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of red in it, even tiny bit of white. Oh, that's uh, titanium white. Got a little bit more diazine purple. Okay, so there is my, uh, my, that is the color I'm going to use. Now I'm going to get a fairly large brush because I don't feel like spending all night painting this. And this is a ruby satin silver number 12 I'm not going to wet it and I'm going to come over here to my canvas what I might do is just take a little mister bottle like this and mist the canvas like this one two three mist 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 fine mist not a Windex bottle please uh, but some sort of fine mist bottle I, I don't want a lot of water on here just a tiny bit most people put way too much water with acrylics this is not a water media when you're using it as an oil painting a style of paint. So we've got this little canvas of Velcro to a larger canvas so that we can hold it with this easel. See that? I'm going down and across. Look, I want you to see like in seconds I can have this painted and I can be drying it or we can be answering some questions. I think while I'm waiting for this to dry a little bit before I get out the hair dryer, I'm going to do my, I'm going to explain to you about cloning. This, I'm glad we're going to be leaving this video up so I don't feel like you have to run grab the paints right now. If you want to, sure, come on. But if you just want to kind of digest this the first time and then come back to it a little bit later, we appreciate it or share it with your friends. That's all very nice. Okay, you can see where we're going to be painting this little cottage. All right, something very simple tonight. Real simple, real easy. Uh, we've got some much more elaborate and, and complicated of farmhouses and barns and stuff on gingercooklive.gallery in our lesson library. And there's just levels of painting, all right? And, but regardless, there's certain things that happen across, whether it's a simple painting or more complicated painting, there's some rules we want to follow. And uh, one thing, first thing is that don't just leave brushes lying around, stick them in water when you're done. So there it goes, but try not to leave it there for days. I'm going to get out a, a chalkboard and some chalk. And the first thing I want to talk about is cloning. All right, so I've got my little chalkboard here. Now, if I write the letter A like this, here's A, okay? I probably learned to write those letters when I was, uh, I don't know, five, six, maybe younger, okay? Now, what's interesting is I write them the same way today. 
uh, my mind now understands that this is an A and it will just automatically write it. This is why handwriting experts can tell you about your personality and so forth. And, and people generally make the same letters over and over again, which is very good in handwriting. But now here's what happens. If I was five or six and I said that this was a tree like this, I was five when I made that. Now your mind doesn't know the difference between this tree and the letter A, just doesn't know. So the problem is you as an adult are bopping along, getting all ready to paint something, and you see a fine art painting and it's got this nifty pine tree in it, and suddenly you find you're not painting that because your mind goes, now wait a minute, we know what a tree is, this is our handwriting for tree, you don't need to do that. And, and honestly, it happens. Or suppose that you've overridden that program and you've got this really nifty looking pine tree, you know, there's like hundreds of different kinds of pine trees, but your mind will go, wait a minute, this is our letter A for pine tree. This is what we make. And you'll have a tendency, for instance, this happens with clouds. This happens with rocks. You'll just make the same shape all over again because it doesn't know the difference between the cloud and your, and your letters. Okay, so you have this artist. This happens to all of us. This isn't just new artists. I've seen... I, I can go to a museum and just show you where they've cloned a bunch of clouds or cloned a bunch of rocks or, you know, somebody just made one pine tree and just Xerox them all across the, the picture. But there's no such thing as that in nature. They're all a little bit different. And we have to think about that, not cloning. That being said, we're going to talk. I mean, I think that's pretty good. If anybody has any questions, why am I erasing that, John? Does anybody? I'm afraid not. Everything's for me so far. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. All right. So now, now I want to talk to you about, now that we're not going to do the pine tree we made when we were six, okay? All right, we've decided, okay, so we need another pine tree. We need to understand, if we're talking about a pine tree with snow, a very simple way to make it and still make sense. Now, if you, if you think about a tree, if, you know, here's a straight line for a tree. Trees generally taper, so this is a pine tree. It's got a trunk. It's going to be wider at the bottom like this. In fact, I could put this right up here on the easel, I think. I'll do that, John. Put it right up here in the easel and say, here's my, here's my pine tree. It's going to come up like this, right? But then what happens to it? Well, you, you know, it isn't just sticks coming out on the side like this, because what about the stick that, what about the, the, the branch that's facing you, like this piece of chalk? What about that one? How do you show that one? Well, how are you going to show that one? Because you really can't, okay? So if I'm saying this is my pine tree, and then there's some branches right here, and then I would come across the pine tree like this to indicate one that was in front, like this, and then I might come across here like this, Say this is this one, and as you go down, those of you who have been out tree shopping, if you happen to be uh, celebrating the holiday where you put in a Christmas tree, you know that the fuller the tree, it's, uh, you don't want big gaping holes in it. You do though if you're an artist for, for a painting, but when you're buying one, you generally look for things that don't have holes, and you know that the skirt or the skirt of the tree, are the, uh, that they gets bigger as it goes down, all right? And it kind of comes in front like that. So suddenly, I've got a fairly good looking pine tree, all right? I didn't have to do much. You might see a little of the trunk, but not much. Okay, so there's your, that's kind of your pine tree. All right, like that. Now, but now what happens? I want to put some snow on this pine tree. Oh, well, that's a different thing, isn't it? Of course, I don't have any blue chalk. We'll just pretend that the yellow chalk is snow. Now, you've got to think about this. My pine tree in real life is going to be dark green, like in this picture. Okay, so you're going to start off and paint something dark green. All right, but now you've got to think about snow think about gravity it's all coming down here like this so where does the snow go it goes it lands on the top of this not underneath and one of the biggest uh, errors i see in painting is that the artist will want to make the tree all white and that's not what happens so you've got some tr it, and it's kind of clumping like this and some of this shows underneath so here's my yellow okay that we're going to pretend that the yellow is snow you got to we don't even want to go why we don't want yellow snow but anyway the yellow snow and here we go that's a very and, tall dog. Right, so a very tall dog. Okay, John, thank you very much. Uh, aliens, right? Okay, <laughs> go for aliens, John. <laughs> Just aliens. Run if oh, you see that was a yellow last tree. Night. Let's not go there again. <laughs> all right, all right. So, all right, so, but you see what happens is, is that um, uh, the snow is hitting the top, but every area it's indicated is white. That's got to be dark green, it's just the bottom line. That's what it has to be. And again, you don't want it all the same shape. You want, you want it to be kind of like this. Now we have got, you know, for instance, John, do you have that picture of the one we're going to be releasing in, um, 
at the, at the end of this month, December, by that Norwegian artist, where he has these beautiful snowy those snowy trees. Now that looks like a hard painting to do. But oh, this, the one that I didn't put up yet, right? You, you didn't put that one up? No, we went through the whole list and we forgot that one. Well, it's we've got the painting. You can hold well, the painting. Well, up. I'm going to show the painting. Why don't you grab me the painting and I'll show the oh, painting? Oh, that's, that's easy for me to get. Well, of course it is, because you're just sitting there doing nothing, right? John's sitting there doing nothing, and I have some paintings here. It's uh, right there. I can see it. So you could just hand it to me. Look at that. All right. The magic of John's arm. All right. So now you see what I'm talking about now? Now, now can, okay, can you see this pine tree? It's not that different than what I just drew. So if you look about let this. Me, uh, let me go to the close-up camera, and then you yeah, can slide yeah. it over a little bit so you can really. This see. way? This way? Uh, that'd be the other way. Like this. Do you see it? It's not that different. Now, we've added some colors to the snow, but you see you've got the dark tree underneath, and, and where it's coming in front, that indicates that the tree is looking at us. Now, I didn't make this up. We've been painting this original painting, the one that, uh, that we have for a lesson, was originally done in, eight, in the 1800s. This is just pretty much how, how pine trees are done. Okay. Now, there may be some different types of pine trees, different shapes and so forth, but if snow's dumping on them, the gravity kind of thing works. All right. So you see this pine tree and you see these over here and we haven't really changed anything. So once you get that down, it gets pretty easy. And then once you understand that snow isn't white, it's got colors to it and shadows, then we're in good shape. Yeah. Piece of cake. So, all right. So that's kind of cool. So I wanted you to see that. So when you look at this painting, go, oh, I never could paint that. Maybe you could. Maybe it won't be as scary as you thought because we're going to break it down into small things. Now this painting is still slightly wet. So let me just take a minute. John's going to mute my camera. Can you show us some mute other... Um, yeah, I'm going to mute your camera. Sa mute the sound <laughs> while you show us some other uh, pine trees. We have some great lessons on gingercooklive.gallery if you're a subscriber. And we'll show you some of our other snow lessons that are in the 250 lesson library while I'm drying this. Okay? All right, you're muted. All right, let me bring up a couple of these. These are uh, some of the other ones we have in our library right now. Um, we do have a, a year-long special running right now. If you sign up for a year membership before the 31st, you will be able to get, besides the year-long membership with Ginger, you also have the downloadable lessons. You'll have a total of 12 throughout the year, one a month, or you can save them all up for the end. Just before the end of the month, you want to have all 12 taken up. Oh, she's back. Let me... Uh, so we'll talk more about that again. That's a year-long special we have going on, um, and the holiday special. More information is at the website, but we'll talk a little bit more. Let me bring Ginger back. Okay, so you guys can still hear me. You might have a, my microphone's on. Okay, so yeah. this is dry. See, dry. Now what we're going to do? We had to have something on here. We're going to come up about um, uh, four fingers, like that. It's eight by ten canvas. Come over here about four. And uh, I don't know, I'm just going to do some sort of little snow bank. One thing you don't want to any sharp, hard lines in snow. Snow's always kind of banked. Uh, when we were kids, we had got snow in Washington State. You don't get it as much anymore. But we did then. And I, let's see, I want to come over here about three fingers here and start my first little house. Um, this is the other thing I want to talk to you about. This is one of the things that I see that um, when you're drawing a house, th this is where, and this is so simple, honestly. And... Um, Really, when it's snow, you kind of got a little sway back cottage here. But I want you to think about drawing an A, and then this line here and this line here have to be twins. They can, you can't have this line running off in this direction, all right? So we're going to start here, and we're going to put in another little house right here, another little A-frame, and here's our roof like this. It's about, I don't know, two fingers down from the top here, and about, I don't know, two fingers over. We're just going to draw this on here like this, a little snowy thing here. Nothing, we're not doing anything too complicated. I'm trying to keep this simple because I don't want you to get afraid of the picture. And, and, and if, you st if we do too big of things, everybody's got just so many hours in a week to be painting. And I want you to just try something little like this, a little door here. We're going to say a couple of windows, little boxes. Okay, that's pretty easy. Uh, maybe another little window here, some sort of little window. And something up here. We could have done a little dormer. You can add, you know, you can sit there and 
Google gingerbread houses and start adding more elements if you want. Get this really complicated. But the idea of how you paint it isn't that different, okay? So now I've, I've got that, all right? So I've sort of outlined that. And then let's see. I think we said there was going to be a little, little walk here like this. I think I said that, like that, and a little walk. And then I'm going to... I'm just going to put a little, we're going to get, we're going to even do it less complicated than that one. We're just, we'll do something like that. Just make it real simple. Okay, so in a cottage like this, we, we need to, let's take a, let's see, what have we got? Ruby satin silver. This is a number, I should put my glasses on when I'm trying to read these numbers. Uh, something, I don't know, it's a quarter inch brush, long handle, but the short handles are good too. Now, I want another coat of paint up here in my sky, so I'm going to go back with that color, a little bit of purple, a little bit of white, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and I'm going to introduce just a drop of thalo in that sky, just a drop now, and I'm going to come up here like this, and I'm going to add the sky in again. This is the, one of the things people don't do is put enough paint on their canvas, so this is layer two of the sky, so it's a little bit different, and it has a tiny bit of thalo blue in it. That's too, too light too much white, so let's uh, bring that back down, a little bit darker. I'm going to put that on here like this. And, you know, it's just, it's really, there's really nothing tricky about this. Everybody goes, I don't know, Ginger, it looks tricky. It really isn't. And once you get this, there's certain shapes that just pretty much repeat themselves, certain things, brush strokes that repeat, and then it's just deciding where you want it, what colors you want to make something, and how, um, Okay, so, you know, how, how much time you have to make it? Obviously, something that's a little bit smaller, you're going to get through quicker. One of the things we do on our website, which I'm really proud of, is we do a lot of small pictures so that you get... Acrylic paint isn't inexpensive, and, or is any kind of... All this stuff costs, uh, you know, money to buy all these t tools and equipment, and you want to get the most bang for your buck. So do something small, and then come back, and then try it bigger. Uh, most of these paintings and all can be done bigger, but do a small one first. Get the hang of it, just so you sort of understand, like a dry run, how it really works, okay? Now, let's see. What did I do here? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to take... A, um, I need a little bit of a snow in the background behind this. So what I'm going to do is just take a little toothbrush and wet it. And I'm going to come over here to my palette. Just kind of squirt this around like this. Maybe put a little bit of water on this, not too much, because I just need a little bit of, uh, just going to spray here. Okay, there we go. Let's just get a little bit of snow going back here like this behind the, 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 the hill here before we, I don't want to mess up all my house here. All right, so there's my, there's my snow here like that. There you go. Boop, 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 boop. All done. All right, so now while that's drying, the toothbrush goes in water. Stiff toothbrush is very handy. I can be working on the, um, on the little bricks. So you want the grout color when you're doing the bricks and the stone. So the stone color, that would be, we need a gray. So cad red medium, which we have somewhere mm -hmm, here, and this other was an apple crimson. Cad red medium is kind of an orange. It has yellow in it. And uh, um, ultramarine blue and white make a very good gray. Did you guys know that? Makes a great gray. It's almost like kind of a purpley gray color. Now, if you want it a little bit warmer, you can add a little yellow oxide to that, just a drop of that in there, just like 2%, and add a little bit more color. Now, I've got this really decent gray color, all right? There's yellow grays, blue grays, red grays, purple grays. Okay, so we're going to say, come up in here like this, and uh, under here like that. I didn't mix this up too much with the brush, just a little bit. Okay, so here I'm going to say, here's my... This is the grout color for my house. All right, and same thing here, too. I'm just going to come in here like this. Say this is the grout color. And some of your uh, blue is going to show underneath. doesn't matter. You're going to cover most of this up with little stones. How are we doing on uh, questions, John? Anything coming in? Well, I think the biggest question is it's going to be negative 45 degrees somewhere on Saturday. Who's somewhere where? I'm not sure. That sounds terrible. I... I well, As I sit by the Michigan. pool, I don't think I'll worry about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely not. Just, uh, it's, uh, we just, uh, we don't quite have the air conditioner on today, but it's much, it's much uh, warmer than that. In, in oh, wait a minute. We do have a real question. Real question. Okay. What's the easiest way to make your snow not look so flat? Well, the question is, what is the easiest way? I'm going to show you how to make your snow look so flat, is you've got to give it shadows. 
Um, can you show that flash real back while I'm doing this? That picture of the barn with the snow and the there was a barn with snow and everything, and they've got these shadows and the driveway. That one. Can yeah, you show let that me, one? Flash uh, that back let me pop that back up here. Yeah, pop that back up and see. Do you, do you see? You know, there's that one, you know, and that one has some shadows in it. But I'm talking about the, there's, I have another one that has a lot more blue in it. But even those, you see, there's shadows. The snow isn't white. There's shadows in the snow, and that's why you don't want it to look flat. That one actually is the snow's kind of melting. But the one before that, the other barn one, which is actually a little bit simpler than that one, is the, the one I'm barn? thinking of. I, th I think it might be this one. Uh, which Wait one? Wait a minute. i got to go back. Okay, okay. And that this one? one. Okay, so there see that go. snow doesn't look flat because you see the phthalo blue. You see the shadows that have happened on on the snow. All right, we've we created some shadows and also everything's sort of curved. There's really you don't want a lot of straight lines. All right, so that's the other thing uh, that you don't you know. So that that would be that that one. Okay, all right. So that thank you, John, because I think that's a good way to kind of illustrate what you want now. Uh, I, I can't put a dark color over a light wet color, all right? Can't do that. I can come back here with um, what? We, got, we don't know, Ginger. It was your picture. Okay, yeah, I get it. But um, what? Oh, yeah. Let's put some windows in because I can kind of override this for windows. I'm going to take a little cad yellow medium. You know, Thomas Kincaid was just famous for these cute little cottages with windows, and they, they had a big hype about the fact that he um, had... Uh, you know, he was the painter of light, and of course he was, but, but he wasn't the first painter of light. There have been painters of light for centuries, okay? And uh, one of the tricks is you just do sort of a yellow-orange window, and you get some glow out in the snow. Now, you see how the, this brush is actually making the size of the window here. Let's, let's just fill that one in here, too. Let's just put that one in real quick. Um, again, keep this simple, kind of fun, kind of cutesy. We're not trying to do fine art in this particular case. We're just sort of giving you a sense of how you might paint something, so don't get too wrapped up in it. Kind of keep it a little bit more impressionistic, okay, like that. And let's see, do we have anything over here? Well, I think I'll do it yellow here where the door is. And the reason is a door will, uh, I have a red door here, and it will look a little better if it's yellow first, okay. So, all right, there. Okay, so now I've done that. Okay, so I'm going to... We have a question here, just something you want to keep in mind. I struggle a lot with shadows, especially where to put them. Well, the question is, you know, if you're struggling with shadows, where to put them? That's a, that's a good question because here's, here's, here's why. Because you've got a light source, and if we were to just do a box or something, one side's going to be darker than another. And, for instance, um, it's night, so most of the snow is going to be in shadow except for where the windows may be lighting it, something like that. Uh, that kind of stuff, the light's coming from the moon and, you know, who knows. But it's going to be lighter on top. So, you know, you've got that area. Is this still wet here? Yeah, this is still wet. Um, is this still wet? Um, yeah. Okay, so let's see. What could I do now while I'm waiting for this to dry? All right, we could take some white paint and a little bit of um, phthalo blue and white. little tiny bit and a tiny bit of cad red medium. Very little. Just sort of gray it off. Just a little tiny bit. Just gray that snow off just slightly. And let's just come up here like this and let's start with our first layer of snow on the roof, okay, of this house. We'll just do that. We'll so we're going to put some white over it, but we've got to put something on here. So this is our first layer of snow on this house. And if, you know, I'm trying not to scrub, but here we go. Here we go. So here's some snow. Here's the roof of the house. Here's okay. a question. See now you're working with the white. Which is the best white to use for snow, titanium or zinc? Well, the question is, what's the best white to use for snow? 99% of the time, you're going to use titanium for everything. And zinc white is a transparent white, so that's maybe wouldn't be such a good color for snow. Zinc white is for uh, putting things in the background. Maybe if it was a blizzard and you needed to push some trees back, you'd put some zinc white. It would be a background color for the most part. All right, that's it for sure. You'd know that. Here's this. It kind of gives thing. a fog effect. Yeah, kind of a fog effect. Uh-huh, exactly. So, you know, the zinc white. All right, so uh, you can see where I've done that. Now, I think I'll just change the size of my brush, come up with a slightly bigger one. And as long as I'm here, I'm going to just, I'm still waiting for stuff to, to dry. So I'm going to take a little phthalo blue, little cad red medium, little phthalo. The, the cad red sort of tones this down a bit. I'm going to come here like this, come under our house. I'm not going to cover all of this, but i got to put something here anyway. So I'm just going to throw some snow on at this point. And you'll notice that um, the brush strokes are curving. 
that's the other thing I want to talk about. The brush strokes are curving. So that's kind of, kind of matching what the snow will do. Yeah, so, but yeah, just imagine. And I know it's hard if you've never seen it. I've got some students here in Houston. The one lady, she was painting this beautiful little scene from a calendar. And honestly, she'd never seen snow. So she's really just following the colors. I mean, obviously, she's seen movies and stuff. You see snow. But until you've walked in it, had that stuff go down your back because some friend is throwing snowballs or, you know, I mean, spent the day locked out of the house because... You're in the snow and somebody forgot the key and just locked you out, right? Those kind of, you just really, are, you know, or been skiing in it and snowmobiling in it or, you know, spend some time in it. It's hard to really, um, you know, it, you need it kind of implanted in your brain what it's like. And then, you know, no one really has to explain it to you. Okay, so there we go. That's, a, that's like what we would call an underpainting. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. I can take a little bit of ultramarine blue now. Come up here and, and just on top of that add a little shadow because I know I want some shadows here. A little bit darker. I'm not making this up because I saw it in the house. I'm going to come over here on this bank here like this and say that there's some darker shadows. Because this is wet and I just went into the ultramarine blue, notice I got some light areas too. So I'm not getting too crazy. And then here's some blue running along here our walk like that. Okay. It's not here's enough. another question for you. Uh-huh. Do you ever use pure titanium white to do snow, or is it always a tinted color? Oh uh, yeah, sometimes we'll come back with some real white. That, you know, we, we we will do that for sure. But uh, that's probably the last thing you do. The white would be the very last color that we do. All right, that's dry well enough. Let's take a small brush and work on the. Um, let's work on the stones. Okay, so I need burnt umber for my rocks. All right, so I'm going to get a little burnt umber. And um, uh, we're using heavy body Matisse paint, uh, but you could be using Liquitex or heavy body or um, uh, golden, something like that. Something where the red costs more than the white. It's good if you can swing it. All right, now let's come up here and we're just going to add a stone here like this. And what you want to do, remember I talked about cloning. Well, you'll clone these silly stones too. Your mind will go, oh, okay, you want a stone? Stone? Well, they're all going to look like this, which is fine if you were doing bricks. But you do not want all your rocks to look the same. And, and even my mind will go, okay, uh, rocks? Sure, we can do that. So you have to be thinking about it that so your rocks are not all the same. Kind of move them around, leave some grout showing, okay? And uh, think about where, where these are going to go. For instance, if I put a, a rock here, that's good because that gives me a little bit of a barrier between this house and that one, all right. So we'll put a little rock here. A couple right. of people wanted to know when we put the spattering on. The spattering, the snow in the background was done before the houses were put in. Yeah, we just did that so we could get that in there. All right, so here's a little house here. Now, you, you see I'm already starting to, to make similar stones, so I've got to change the shape on them because everybody does it. This isn't like some beginner thing that happens. This is your mind is trying to be so helpful, it really doesn't know the difference between the letter A and these rocks. Okay, it just doesn't. So once the nice thing is that once you get it down on how to draw something, it's pretty easy. You know, you may not be able to draw everything, but you've got bicycles down, or you've got horses down, you've got trees. Maybe you're a little girl and you were a kid, you drew horses. Okay, and you've got that down. You know what else you can do? But you can sure do those, right? And um, that's kind of cool. And um, I'm using a little ruby satin silver angle brush here, making some little stones under here like that. Generally, as a rule, I'm not, you know, taking a lot of time with this. Generally, as a rule, uh, stones are a little bit bigger on the bottom of a house and tend to get smaller. We could have done, um, made these a little smaller. I'm just trying to show you. And again, if this were bigger, it would be easier to do larger, too. Much, actually, much simpler than what we're doing now. We've got to put some stones under here like that. Okay, so we've got some different ones on that house. Moving along with more questions, John. Well, right now we seem to be caught up with what you're doing. Okay, all right. They, they feel they can do snow. Snow seems a little better already. Really? Oh, that's good because you just, you've got to just relax and just know that there's, throw some purple, some, <laughs> some thalo blue and some ultramarine blue in your shadows and your snow, and everybody will think you're just nifty keen. Let's, let's make this a kind of a little arch under here. Shall we? So just, I, I tell you, the best way to do is just sort of Google a gingerbread house or something, and then just sort of, I'm showing you how to paint something like this, and then make your own. I mean, this isn't really tricky, you know, 
It does. It doesn't have to be so complicated. It really doesn't. And we'll put some st little stones here. Now, one thing as I'm out of paint here, so I'm going to get some more paint. Okay. So this is my first layer. But first layer of brown rocks. All right. And what were the colors you used again? Uh, burnt burnt uh, umber, a little ultramarine blue to make it dark. Okay. All right, and that's usually how I make all my dark colors. You know, it's burnt umber and ultramarine blue makes a really good dark brown. Okay. Well, right. I think what Ginger's putting in these, let's tell you a little bit more about our sale that we got going on until the 31st. A one-year membership uh, will get you 12 extra downloadable lessons from our store as well as the personal art coaching will be locked in for the year for that. Um, as we get filled up, uh, we will be backing down and taking, put people on a waiting list for the art coaching. There's only so many hours a day that Ginger can do that, and I like to keep her painting as much as possible as well. Um, so you want to sign up for the year. If you are a current member, just contact us so we can work out when your current membership is up so we can uh, plan it accordingly. You just need to be signed up before the 31st. On the 1st, our prices are going up approximately 10% across the board. Um, our costs are going up. Our canvases are bigger. There's more paint involved, etc. I think you can all understand that. And we want to continue doing these great lessons for you folks. So that's what we want to make sure happens. Um, didn't she paint the trees and the background first? Uh, the question is, didn't I paint the trees in the background first? Well, not really, because um, they, they just tuck in here. These two, truck in, these two trees tuck in front of that one. These are behind, but they're easy well, enough they to throw see. in there. And I'm, 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 a part of me, now you've got to appreciate this, part of me is waiting for stuff to dry, okay? You can, you know, we're waiting for things to dry. That's, that's part of the genesis of this um, in other words, rather than run the dryer every five minutes, I've been wandering around the painting trying to do a few things that I could do that, um, here, we'll put in a few little stones up here on the walk now, just get it a little smaller here. The uh, personal art coaching is if you're working on a painting and you think you're done with it or as you're working on it, you take a picture of it, you email it in, we have a special form on our website, Ginger will look at it, and she'll even comment directly on your picture, your painting, what she thinks might might be needed to improve it. Or uh, maybe it's just perfect. I had someone today that sent me something, and my gosh, I loved it. It was just nothing really else to do except go on to the next lesson that she captured it. Some of our lessons, for instance, John, are, um, are based on, you know, are, did you learn blending? Uh, for instance, even if you already paint, I have certain specific ways I do things that, you know, I've been painting with acrylic since I was 17. And uh, back when I was doing it, there was no one to tell you how. You just had to guess, guess it. So a lot of the things that I do are unique to me. And so I share those too. Okay, I'm going back over here and darkening a few rocks. Okay, like that. So, well, all right. So now you've got the house. Now we're going to put some pine trees in. This is dry now, the snow. Okay, so let's start with that burnt umber. And let's start with a little bit of ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and some yellow. And let's make a dark green, cad yellow medium. Let's make a dark green, okay? Let's maybe put a little bit of uh, cad red medium in it. Okay, we're using ultramarine blue, red, green shade. Let me just test that up here. Now, what do I know? I know I've got some, here, let me just pinch that off. I know I've got some dark, I've got a dark green uh, tree back here. Remember, I just, I, I just know that I have it. And I'm, just the way I did it in, in chalk, I'm going to go ahead and put this, just sort of tuck this back between the houses. But I have to start with my base first. That's my dark green. And then we're going to come up here like this and put another one. Very simple, using the little tiny angle brush, because I'm using just the tip on that little bit brush here. And then, and listen, don't make them all the same size at the same height. Some are fatter, some are skinnier. Try to vary this stuff. I wouldn't want a tree, here's the thing, I wouldn't want a tree straight up from here, okay, that would be weird. So you could have one off to the side a little bit, but not straight up from the point of that, uh, the roof. Then maybe I'll come up here like this, skip a space, and make a bigger one here like this. Here's a, here's a bigger pine tree like this, okay, like this. There's a bigger one that's coming here, I don't have any snow on it yet. Get new trees, and then how about, I put in a little chimney here when you weren't looking. 
Okay, I just threw that chimney in. And then we're going to come over here behind the house and do another one. Everything gets, it goes up very straight to a point. Maybe it's just all you're going to see on this one is here like this. And then let's come up here and do a big one. Um, I'm going to add a, just kind of out of paint now. But I'll make it a little bit greener as I come forward. So I'm adding a little bit more yellow to the paint and maybe a little phthalo blue. And I'm going to make it slightly greener instead of ultramarine. I want a little bit greener as I get into the front of this canvas here. So these other ones were almost a very, very kind of dark gray green. And that's a little bit too um, bright. You don't want it too bright, but on the other hand, you want a green on it. So here we go. So we're going to come down here like this next to this house. And remember, I said I'm going to go all the way out here on the bottom. And you'll see me pick up more paint and right in the front of this here like that. This is our big big tree. Let's come over here and pop in a couple more. I'm going to be over on this side now. I think I've got three. Okay, I'm a little bit close to, too close to that red, so I'm going to change where I'm mixing. Got a little close to that red. It was getting a little precarious over there. I was getting all the wrong colors. So here's a dark green like that. And this is pretty much, how, you know, everybody wants to buy greens. What green do you buy? We never buy greens. We, um, you mix them. You, if you want an army green, you start with ultramarine blue. And if you want a Hawaii green, you start with uh, phthalo blue. And if you want it brighter, you add phthalo. Okay, I'm going to say there's a dark kind of tucked behind that house there. Let's get another one. See, let's see. I think I can fit one way in the back. Get, get a little skinny one back here like this. Tuck that one in. And then we've got one over here. That'll be in front of those, like this. We got a few questions coming up about the membership. If you, sure. if you're painting those trees in, sure. Uh, one of the questions is, what does Ginger recommend as as a beginner? Where do you start on the website, on our website? If you become a member, what do you recommend starting with? Well, I would say what we have is a whole group of lessons called Back to Basics, and they're some of the tech there. That and the reason they're the techniques that I teach. So that, you know, blending techniques, uh, color mixing techniques, so that as you go to the other lessons, they're all based on knowing these things. So if you start with the one and two cookie lessons, start with the back to basics, and then kind of play around in the one and two cookie lesson area. And we have so many, we understand that not everybody wants to paint a pine tree, and not everybody wants to paint an ocean or a bicycle. So we, there's a lot of variety on our website that allows you to pick lessons that are interesting to you, because it's no fun to paint things you hate. I mean, nobody wants you to, to, to do that. So that's what we try to do is find things that are sort of interesting to you and then we we go from there, all right? All right, so while the trees are drying, does that answer that, John? Yeah, pretty much. And then the right. next question would be, what's the difference between the lessons on the website and what you're teaching us here right now on YouTube? What's the difference between the YouTube lessons and the gingercooklive.gallery lessons? Well, John just showed you some good examples of, of the lessons that we have on our, our, our website and also we... We go into a lot of detail on them, step by step. And besides being able to get personal art coaching from them, there's such a variety. On YouTube, for instance, we have a couple snow scenes on here, and we, we have some larger ones. But the, the website lessons are designed to, if you keep, if, as you keep doing them, you're going to get, we keep increasing the level difficulty. And so that eventually, you, you'd just be amazed at the kind of art you can do. That's what we, we're hoping for you, is that that's, I would say one of the, what would you say one of the other differences are, John, because there's a bunch. Well, basically, you also explain more about the actual process, a little bit more in depth, why you're doing certain things in a certain way, and, and, and analyzing the colors, and really talking more to you, really teaching you at a higher level. Yeah, there's, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of chatting here, it's explaining some things, we're doing a lot of chatting here, and then we're real, there we're really focusing. All right, so I need a little bit of white and brown okay and we don't repeat we have some and we we up until last week if we we had one lesson every week we left on youtube and the other two we would if we showed it we took it down and it was for our members but we realized that we, our, our, our lessons were getting so um it, it, elaborate that people didn't have time to do that many lessons a week anyway we were giving people three lessons a week every thursday our members get a a lesson no one else gets. So, for instance, do you have some examples of what's coming up next Thursday, John? 
Well, I believe this Thursday it will be uh, yours truly. It's Santa. It's a portrait of John as Santa Claus. Somebody that made a comment on YouTube today they didn't like the nose, but that's John's nose. I yeah, hey, I'm, I'm stuck with it. You know what I'm going to do with it? Get his nose job? Come on. It's a good you nose. Know, it's, 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 it's John's treated me nose. Well for it, years. It's a portrait. No, normally Santa's nose is a little fatter and broader, and you don't have to do John's nose on there, right? Um, yeah, you can use somebody else's nose. I won't be offended. But anyway, that is that is a portrait, and the step-by-step how to do that portrait of John, okay? And then and, after that, uh, we're going to have the Foxy Lady. Yeah, that's Again, a, that's, that's, a that's only for our members. That's for our members of the website. Is there any chance that canvas is 9 by 12? Yeah, the one we're currently working on is a 9 by 12. Yeah, that's a 9 by 12. Good observation. Uh-huh. This is an 8 by 10, okay? We do a lot of 6 by 8s because we understand people want to get it without spending hours trying to figure out how to do it. Notice I lightened up with some of those... Um, those little rocks, okay? You saw that? We, we lightened up some of those. All right, now, um, has this dry? The green hasn't dried yet, so I think we're going to work a little bit on the. Um, let's let's play a little bit. Let's just uh, put the yellow out again, and um, let's let's give it. Yellow is one of those things where a little bit of yellow and orange. Let's just brighten up those windows a second time. That's sort of cool. See, like right like this. We're going to brighten up those windows. Look what happened when I do this. Brighten up this window here like that. There we go. I like it with a little touch of orange through it. Yeah, and I've streaky. got a little lantern right here I'm going to put too, right? Like the little lantern right the there. The highlight color that you use on the, snow, on the stones is what? It's just a, it's just brown and white. It's just you know, brown. Oh, burn, I, I, don't, burn, burn, I, I don't have white. brown. Do you have brown? I don't have brown. Burn number oh, is brown. Okay. Burn number is brown. I see. Okay, so now you saw where we did the, um, and we're going to take a little bit of the, we're going to take a little bit of cad red medium and burnt umber. Uh, I'd rather burn number and a little tiny bit of um, yeah, cad red, cad red medium, and I want to come over here on this side of this roof here, uh, on the chimney, and kind of make that a little bit redder right here, so that's a little bit different. So this side of the chimney is different than that side, and you'll notice it's going down at an angle. All right, and I think I'm going to just take naphtha crimson and paint this door in now, and leave a little space for the window. There was a little window in the door. See that? That's oh, awfully is, strong. Yeah, it's a red door. Okay, now if you didn't want it that bright, you could put a little ultramarine blue with it and tone it down. But we'll, all, we'll start with the bright door. You can always tone it down. There's our red door like that in our house like that. Okay, now let's see. What else can we do while we're fooling around here? Oh, wait a minute. The question came up. Uh, yes, the Santa and the Foxy are for members only. You can join just for a week and get those two lessons done easily for nine ninety five. Yeah. That price will not be going up. Uh, the new Wave and Water lesson is amazing. Will that lesson be for sale? It will be. It's going to take it about probably six weeks before we can get it fully uploaded and put it pieced all together because that is a massive lesson. And it won't be a cheap one. Yeah, the benefit of being a now. member is that you get <laughs> lessons nobody else gets. Plus, you get personal art coaching on how to make them. And you get a new one every week. So, I mean, there's some real benefits to membership. Okay, so now... I want to take um, a little phthalo blue and oh, We white. have a question. Um, if you can, if you could offer a sample lesson in the style of your website lessons, it would help me uh, access the, assess the difference and hopefully encourage some of us to go. There are some up there. We need to re, kind of revisit that. But there are some up there currently. If you go to our menu, it'll say free lessons. Um, some of those are the YouTube ones, but other ones are not. And we, we, we are addressing all that. Thank you, though, Zoe, for your comment. We will do that. Yeah. Because there's a difference in a one-cookie lesson and a box of cookie lessons. Big difference. But you build up to it. And go to my Pinterest page. You can't believe what some people are painting. I'm telling you what, if you go to my Pinterest page, this is phthalo blue and white, kind of, uh, you know, kind of trimming out the windows a little bit and the doors, okay, like that. Trim that out. See, it's already coming along, and I think this green is... Quite, still not quite dry enough. Let me just hit this with the dryer once, John. Kind of procrastinating you down. as much as I can. Now? Yeah, go ahead. So while she's drying that off, um, see if there's any other questions we can do. Coming through here. How many jobs does Ginger have? Um, well, she does this one primarily. This is, this is what we're trying to get to. We're both trying to semi-retire and do this. Um, she also does her night painting parties. And I try to keep her chained here as much as possible. Huh. 
So she keeps painting and giving me more lessons because I don't have enough to do. I need to keep putting them together. If I get two hours of sleep, I'm, I'm oversleeping. All right, I'm going to start again. Incidentally, I do not, when I, I work for a company called Merlot de Masterpiece, I don't own it. They're not my painting parties, right? Uh, though I did suggest to him seven years ago he start those. All right, I'm a little bit of uh, ultramarine, uh, thalo blue and white, okay? And I'm going to come up here on this, uh, on, right up here, the first tree, and barely touch it and sort of tap it on. Remember, I told you, so gravity, the, 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 the snow's kind of plopping on top here. You want to see, you want to see the... Uh, the dark green underneath, okay? All right, that. Let's do another one, a little bit of gravity here. Uh, Pam, in, in regards, if you're a VLO member and we have uh, the Wave and Water Lessons in the store for download, yeah, and anything that's in the store is available for download. If It doesn't matter which membership you are. And if you are a member, you get a discount from 20 to 40% off, depending upon what it is. So you're welcome most of the, John, most of the wave and water, none of the, up until this 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 last one, we've never we've never made any of the wave and water. No, this is our before. first one, first we've wave and water that, that we're doing. Wave, wave and water has always been, you know, has not, and we're only doing this one because it's like uh, twelve videos. It's just a it's massive. It's huge. It's huge. It's really cool. It's a neat one, and we thought that that you know people would like that. Okay, so that's a little bright. I'm going to add a tiny bit, like less than one percent, um, cad red medium, and that kind of gray that back here a little bit so we can come in the background here and just push that back a little bit all right you see how i see what you can see my my trees back here i mean you can see it right you can see that where we've got the trees in behind us and let's do this one here let's see i think we said it was you know you can look at pictures look at the patterns you know artists what we are is pattern deciphers we decipher patterns, and this is all you're doing. When you paint an ocean, you're deciphering the pattern of it, the waves. Sometimes people get very, very confused about a wave pattern until they see it's all triangles. And then you go, oh, once I tell you it's a triangle, you're going, oh, yeah, yeah I can see that that's a triangle. Okay, so I'm still in the, you know, the light, the sort of medium blue. I don't have any white on here yet. But remember, as the branches come down, they get fuller. And I want to say that there's a that this is looking at us, so it's going to come right in front, like that, okay? And I'm going to come down. Do I need to um, come across here? Can you see me? Here we go. Let's see. Let's kind of lost my color here for a minute. A little bit of thalo blue, cad red medium, and um, and white. And I'm going to come across here like that. I don't want to talk about the edge of this house. I'm just going to bring this in front of this, like this. So here's this, this tree coming this way. Maybe there's something Why don't like you this. put all those lessons together? It's 12. It'd be like a four or five hour video in one big chunk, and we could not get it uploaded. It's way too massive. We have enough trouble getting it uploaded the size it is. Yeah. No, we, 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 we are doing something nobody else is doing. Most people, when you look at what you get on our website for over 200 art lessons that you, you can pick from. I mean, nobody's offering that for $24 a month plus art coaching. I promise you, you can't get that. Just just to come and take a private lesson for me in Houston is wildly expensive, okay? We, we started $100 and go up. So to get some personal art coaching, and besides our lessons, once a month you can send me some little project you're working on, and I'll comment on that as long as I have a photo that you took it from and you just didn't make it up. And somebody says, well, why can't I make it up? Because we're not about making things up. Um, it's, it's all very well to paint your dreams. But, you've, but if you want, uh, nobody, uh, Van Gogh, Man, Man Rahr, Man, Manet, those guys, they, they pose people. They just didn't make this stuff up. They had models. They posed people. You want to, what you're learning in these classes is you're learning how to see shadows, light, and dark, and observe. That's what we're teaching you to do. Observe, so we don't. You don't want to get in the habit of just uh, making things up. Uh, we had a student one time years ago, and she was just insisted I was wrong. You, you, and if you had a high enough IQ, you could remember stuff. And I'm not saying like a tree like this that you can't remember simple stuff like a tree. But if you're starting to talk photorealism with art, then you better have something you're looking at, more of a reference. Right now, I'm almost cloning these trees from mem past memories, or I'm also looking at this, but. Anyway, so it turned, but there was something wrong with her figure uh, that she'd done, and she couldn't figure out what it was. And as it turned out, it was uh, her person had two left feet. Seriously, true story, had two left feet. All right, so we're going to lighten this up. Now we're going to come back here 
on the roof here. There's a little bit of this blue. Let's just too much too blue. Let Take me little... make one clarification on the downloads. The downloads are available with the Wave and with your your membership. They are for videos that are fifty dollar under fifty dollars. So that big wave and water will not qualify as a download. It would not be available. You'll be able to get it at a discount, but you will not be able to get it as, as part of the free downloads. Yes. That was a good question, though. That was a good question. And, and except for two people who signed up before that got on the website. You guys, it was, um, and we know who you are, two people. That there was two exceptions to that, in case you're watching that. Yeah, there were two um, should the snow be lighter at the bottom of the trees and darker towards... Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. I did that backwards. Should the snow be lighter at the top of the trees and darker towards the bottom? Well, the first thing we're going to do with the snow is just get the darker color on. Then we're going to Yeah, basically the you're laying the, you're, you're laying the laying, shadow we're, we're, in we're first. We're just laying the shadows in. We're just... We're not want... You know, the, the, this, and, and we, we want it to be like, for instance, here. For instance, we're going to say that this is our... We want, we want it to be kind of bumpy. This was the other thing I wanted people to see, that you want it kind of bumpy here. See, here's the, here's it on the other side of this roof here like that, right? A little bit bumpy. The same thing here. We're going to, this isn't pure white anymore, okay? So just wanted you to kind of see this. It's not pure white. It's just a little off-white here with this blue snow, and then we'll come back over it with the second coat. Most people never put enough paint on. They don't understand this is all about layering. You know, this is really about layering. Ginger? Is there a trick to know which color to take for underpainting? Is there a trick to know which color to take for underpainting? Well, again, I talked last night. We did a really cool lesson last night with the, you might want to show that, John, real quick. We did a neat lesson last night, full-length video, 16 by 20, and we talked about that underpainting. There's an artist in Hawaii, and all her underpaintings are red, but generally you want the color underneath the color underneath the color. So if you're doing a sunset, lots of yellows and stuff, yellow only paints over white, so I would probably do yellow first but now what if you were doing a big painting and you're going man yellow's pricey and it is boy yellow is one of the more costly colors um, that would be a good time for an underpainting to maybe do a student grade paint as an underpainting that's, that's why i never tell people don't throw anything away for heaven's sakes right don't throw it away see how i'm starting to add some more white here to the roof now and now my chimney i'm going to come up here like this you see my little finger to do this and i'm going to just suggest that there's some snow going across these bricks like this, that there's some bricks here, like that. Okay, and then I'm going to pinch my brush and indicate some bricks going this way, kind of stagger them, like that. And then there's got to be some snow on the roof of this chimney, like that. Okay. See, fun, right? A little snow on the chimney. And let's see, what else can I do? Uh, we're going to have some icicles hanging down from the house here, like this. And I'm going to just bring those down. We lived in Aspen for years, and that was one of the things that they always had was icicles um, everywhere. They were fun, and people's houses all had icicles. And, you know, it wasn't great if one fell on you, but they were pretty neat, and they would drip. And then the, then the, if there was a concrete underneath it, then the... Well, you guys know what this is if you live in snow country. They'd drip, and then... Um, um, <laughs> then they, then the ice would form again, and then you'd have a little spot where you didn't see it, and then places where you could go slipping. So not a good thing. All right, so here we go. Little snow up here, little snow here, little snow on the icicles down here. Let's bring some snow off the roof of this house down here like this. I want you to see this is pretty simple. I mean, this is sort of fun, pretty simple to do. We have, you know, you can spend a lot of time on this. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I'm just saying that this is. Kind of fun to do here like this. We'll oh, a fun little lesson. Just something fun. You can see I'm using the little angle brush. I love these angle brushes. They're my favorite thing. They, you know, I've used ruby satins forever, but I just recently discovered their angle brushes. And we, we talked to our friends, the brush guys over there on um, thebrushguys.com, and they made me a web, made me a page because people kept calling and saying, what brushes does Ginger Cook use? Or, you know, who, what does Cinnamon use? What are the different brushes people use? And so they made me an art, artist page. And then you can, we have a list of the brushes that I recommend, and they're out of, oftentimes, you know, they get, they run out of stock because everybody loves them. And you'll see that the comments we get all the time is, thank you for telling me about these ruby satin silver brushes, because they are the best things I've ever used, particularly these little angle ones for small stuff. All right, so you ready for this? Now we're going to start 
Remember, that was the shadow color for our snow. So now you're putting the highlights. This is the snow that's going on top. Yeah, the snow's going on top. You're right. It's lighter on top. It's a little more shadow on the bottom, right? Like that. Uh, okay. Here's a comment uh, or a question. Hues would be good for underpainting as well? Uh, yeah, hues would be good for underpaintings as well. Just, just you know, the thing of it is, is that, you know, reds and yellows are really expensive. And it's nice if you've got the money, just go ahead and spend the money. But, you know, you don't, you're going to cover chances are you're going to cover it all up anyway. So if you can, you know, if you can save a little money using a less expensive paint for an underpainting, why not? In fact, um, Matisse makes a whole line of inexpensive gessos that are colored. And um, not that you need to re-gesso something, but it does give a nice surface, and that does work. So, you know, they're really nice, some of those. Um, they, we used to have them at Jerry's, you know, when I was teaching there. Houston, I don't know if they still have them, but they did here. All right, so we got some white up here like that. See, here's our tree. Now, remember, this all coming down on the top here, so these ones in back. You want to make sure you leave some of the shadow color, but we can add a bit of that. We had, a, we had a little comment here that a little smoke from coming from the chimney might be appropriate. Yeah, I think a smoke from the chimney would be good, though. Don't you think the snow would melt around the top of the chimney if snow No, would... it doesn't. It doesn't? Nope. Oh, John, that's so good. See, he lives in Michigan. He says it doesn't, even though there's smoke coming from the chimney. That's where mixing white would be really not, good. Not as much snow as we get. Um, or well, had. I don't get it anymore. <laughs> no. uh, well, my, my, my adopted father was from uh, northern Michigan. And he would tell me, in the 18, he grew up in the 1800s, and um, he told about, you know, it was so cold that it had got so much snow that, that the snow would come up to the first floor, cover the house, oh, and absolutely. they would get out the second floor of the house. Yep. And he said that it got so cold. You know how when it's frosty you can see people's breath? He said that you'd have to read what they had to say. Well, that's a good one. I like that. I like that. I mean, well, I mean, it's a little facetious. I mean, you know, a little kid going, really? Oh, <laughs> man. You're going to come to school with that bit, you know? Oh, back to the UFOs. Here we go. Back to the UFOs, yeah. Well, Cinnamon's dad was terrible. He told her, he told her, he didn't want her to eat um, just cheap white bread. You know, he was trying to get her to eat the good stuff. So then, bless his heart, he was just, you know, all parents do this occasionally. He said um, that there were rats in the bread. <laughs> So she toddles off to school to tell all those kids that. I don't know why you're eating that. My dad says there's rats in the bread. We got a call, man. What are you telling that kid, right? <laughs> she's, she's, you know, everybody's, all the parents are upset that you're telling their kids that, right? Well, we didn't tell their kids that exactly. Okay, see, is this sort of cute? Can we see that? We got the little um, stuff going, right, well, like let's, that. Let's back out. Let's get an overall view, see how we're doing. Kind of back out. See, we got a little cottage here. And... You know, you'll see me rinse my brush. Let me come back with a little cat. I, I need a little window here in the door here. Acrylics dry darker, so that door looked pretty big and t pretty bright until I um, uh, put there. Now I'm going to say that there's some snow, snow. Over, the do over the door like this. Over the door. And um, let's see. Uh, there was a window there. Let's see. Let's put a little bit of snow on some of these. What, what size of angle brush does Ginger use the most? Uh, the size of angle brush I like the most are the 3 8 inch and the quarter inch. Those are the, the bigger one I don't use as much, but I really like the 3 inch. The well, mainly because you've been using smaller canvases, but yeah, now we're going bigger, you might use a bigger brush. Yeah, that's true. So it just depends. Again, so much depends on the size of the canvas. So I'm going to say that there might be a little snow on some of these rocks too, see? I mean, there just might be. And so... Um, maybe maybe a little bit more blue, if, you know, some little color on it. But there might be some snow on the, some of this. Okay. So again, you could take some time here and um, play with this a little bit. Doesn't all have to be perfect, but you know, have fun with this. All right. Now, all right. So we said that happened, and then I put this nifty snowman here. Don't you? Should I put the snowman in, John? Do you think I should put the snowman in? For sure, does it need to go in here? Well, okay. I think you probably should. All right, so here's it go. So here's my snowman. And so um, you're basically, that's right out of the jar, titanium white. Yeah, it's titanium white. And then I'm going to make a smaller circle, make a smaller circle like that. Somebody uh, sent us a photograph on um, Facebook, and they had been out playing in the snow, and they made a snowman, and then they made all these tiny ones around it. It was so cute. So let's see. Well, we have a question about the animal portraits that you've done. And we remember we just had that one student do the animal, that collie? Yes, uh-huh. And she did that from your lessons. 
Yeah, the collie from the last one. We've got some beautiful animal portraits, dog portraits, all kinds of stuff. We've got a dog, cat, fox, which is just a... Horse, great horses, beautiful good horses. horses. Beautiful horses here. So I'm going to put some snow going this way. I personally am still waiting for a tractor and a barn. I know, but it's mostly women, and they're just not big on tractors, John. I I, 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 okay, that. folks, I need a vote out there. A tractor and a barn, nice fall scene. What do you think? Back me up on this one. Come on. I'm okay. counting on you. Just, I'm, I'm telling you that, that you've got to appreciate sometimes, you know, that old bit, you know, who are your clients and most of you know, Andrew might back you up in Haiti, but I don't know why he'd want a tractor and a barn in Haiti. He's trying to decorate no, he his likes house. You, yeah, he likes the stuff you've been doing already. So I, I don't think you're going to get Andrew's vote over here. Does right? Ginger do watercolors? No, she's opposed to watercolors. Uh, it's not that I don't do watercolors, <laughs> but I'm, I'm considered, and I, and I say this in, tr in tr truth, a master acrylic artist, and this is what I do, and this is what I'm really good at. And if you go to our website and look at the stuff that we can create with acrylics, you can really appreciate that that's just really a cool thing to do. So no, I don't do watercolors. Though. I know I've done them. I've done oils. Um, but you know what? I don't do airbrush. So if I needed to know how to use an airbrush, I'd go find an airbrush teacher in a, in a minute. I would find an airbrush. My snowman's kind of tilting. Do you see that? Do you think that's okay? I don't know if well, it's okay. No, it's falling over. He's falling over. It really looks falling over on our camera. Yeah, well, you know angle. what? Back me up. Would you get away from the Hey, wait a minute. Up. I got to vote. Gail, I would do a tractor in a barn Gail for my dad. Would? Yep. I don't know. He Gail. loves old tractors. See, everybody's going to do it for a gift. Wendy says it's for a gift. Come on. I have people that want it. Uh -huh. Tractor, barn. <laughs> okay, okay, does Ginger like painting this new way better, or does she like the more days on YouTube? Well, I... The question is, do I like this better? You know, this is really sort of fun to paint with this. You see, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i liking the, this painting. Now we're going to do go into some light blues. And so this is our, we're going to start putting just some snow down here like this. We're starting to add some lighter snow. And I want some darker snow. I'm going to bury the snowman a little bit in the snow here too. You know, you get, you, they, you got to bury them in there, okay? All right, like this. I'm going to add another layer of snow here. This is fun. Okay. Yeah, I like this because I always paint at big easels, and so this is fun. Um, you know, there's something to be said for uh, painting, showing just your hands and painting in your pajamas and not having to worry too much about how you look when you get ready to <laughs> go live. I'm just saying, you know, that this, you know, so there's, a, there's downsides to everything. But on the other hand, I like the, 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 the we got a new, can you tell our microphone how nice our microphone is? We've, we've taken what we've earned on this, um, from our stuff and gone back and really tried to upgrade the equipment so that we have a better quality broadcast. We really, you know, we put this back into what we're doing um, and it's really kind of cool. Besides that, the that's light why we're still it. both working our other jobs as well. And our other jobs as well. <laughs> we, we're gonna, we put, you know, we put money back into this now. I want, that's a little too bright, so I'll just take some white with it, tone that down. You want a little shadow under here with this chimney here and I want a little shadow under here too on the snow. There should be a little shadow here. Whoops, 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 whoops. A little white On there. A little, yeah, but I, Here's a comment. It's so helpful when you tell us the exact brush and size that you're using. So that's something you might want to keep in mind as you're doing the other lessons too. Okay. And question, are the price listed for video and explanation of what is covered? Um... Yeah, the price is listed on the website of each one that's for sale. I'm assuming you're talking about the for sale ones. And the explanations are coming. Uh, we're just doing the best we can to keep up with our current workload. But we are working on a whole other site for the store. So, yeah, that will be more in-depth as we get going. But I, I have the same colors. If you go to my website and look at the colors, we use the same eight stupid colors. And then mix uh, the colors. Ginger, we really don't, I don't have to go stupid. out and buy new stuff. There's, it's not like you have to go out and buy more stuff. <laughs> I mean, Easy. I'm just, Calm just, down. Calm down. I'm sorry, but I mean, I, I, Relax. I mean there's all kinds of, of stuff that you can get at an art store. And I'm Ooh, a, we got like 50 tractor votes. Thank oh, you, Sue, for counting. Uh, 50 no, tractor no votes. Way. That, you're, we you're have 200 people up. looking. I got 50 of them. No, no. A tractor is in the future. Thank you, gang. I appreciate it. Tractors rule. Tractor. Others drool. What, 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 what is this? Where do you get this stuff, John? I don't know. <laughs> Just... Sammy wants to be on a tractor, so we got to get a tractor. Uh huh. Uh -huh. A realistic barn and tractor. That's what we oh, want. A, a realistic barn and tractor. Okay. Barn, barn, tractor, tractor. Thank you, Dee. They're even chanting for me. 
Really? I think you've bribed them. Will we, 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 will we still doing small paintings sometimes? Oh, absolutely. We're going to be doing small paintings, yeah. We're doing a lot of small paintings. Yeah, we um, still do big, big and little. Big and little because not everybody has time to do. And like I'm trying to do, like on Wednesdays, I'm trying to do a fairly small painting here, right? Not everybody has time to do, um, here's a little snow on this, right? Like this, and here's our walkway here. I'm just going to say that there's some snow here. Like Boy, that this. looks slippery. It is slippery. I, it I, looks slippery. The kids should be outside shoveling that snow. I know. It, it, you know, when I lived in Aspen, we, it was, it, you know, snow's silent. And when you wake up and there's all this snow, right? And uh, you just don't remember it being there the night before. And it wasn't, of course. And then I, I think what I want to do here is take a little bit of bright green. And, uh, you know, in this window here, I'm just going to put a little Christmas tree. Like there in this window, like that. Oh, you can do that. I think there was, you didn't see it, there was one in there, but it's kind of hard to see. Here's a question. How do you get the title of Master Acrylic Artist? How do you get the title of Master Acrylic Artist? By winning all kinds of awards and, uh, you know, being represented by, you know, just as far as being able to, uh, I probably, you know, uh, my publishers actually gave me that. And, and a, a, a Art and Artist of the Year, well, some years ago, you can go up and get up, kind of catch the bio. We're not making this up. You know, we really are probably, there's a lot of wonderful artists out here. You know, I'm not saying the only master acrylic artist, but I'm saying that I am considered a master acrylic artist and really, and can take acrylics and really make them feel like um, you can do anything with them. And I think that uh, probably my publishers <laughs> would agree with me. I like this one. We want a man cave garage too. A man cave garage. I, I don't know. I, I think it I'm pushing my luck time. with the uh, barn and yeah, uh, the tractor. Barn I don't think I'm going to go for the man cave. I, that's yeah. not going to work. The thing of it is, is that, and I've said this before too, John, is that, you know, there's an awful lot of people, you know, you'll go to college, for instance, and you might take a course in, uh, say, physics or something, just as an example, right? And the teacher may be the most wonderful physicist there ever was. But can he make you a physicist? It, a lot of times you'll see this more in college where the, the, the person that's teaching the course is, um, you know, doesn't have any way to get it. You know, they give you the assignments. I mean, they don't have any way to make you understand it. And I think where we get the skill here is, in, and these painting parties over the years have really helped too, because I have a good idea what people are liable to do and what they're not going to do. Okay? Oh, the snowman's definitely looking better. And, uh, well, we have to shade him, see? He's yeah, like he's you gave him the roundness. You, you got to shade him a little bit, right? And, 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 um, so that, and so then we can preempt it, like the trees and that kind of stuff. We can kind of preempt what you might be doing. Let's just add a few more shadows here to this snowman here. It might have to just stop and dry something, but I think we're pretty good here, like that. And, um... Oh, yeah, um... That. Who mentioned that? Sue. Sue mentioned the old gas station and, uh that we have up already, and she made a 16 by 20 of that. I remember that was a good one. Oh, somebody wants to know, will w will we be painting an angel? Uh, the, our members will be painting an angel. <laughs> 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 At some point, and we will probably have the angel available. We will be doing an angel, but it'll be for the, the members will be painting it. It'll be after the first of the year, yeah, though, I'm so thinking. put a little yellow on the snow here from the brightness. It, that looks a little green to me. Well, it's... Yeah, I know it does. We're going to add a little bit of uh, orange here, too. Maybe just right here in front of the windows here. Ginger works magic. Oh, See, well, tell me about it. So we're going to just say there's a little bit of color here from the from the window. And then on this bunny, the belly of the snowman, too, he might be he caught a little light from the, from the window. Okay. All right, so now you can kind of see what we're doing here. Now, if this were bigger, would it be a little bit simpler? Yeah, sure, would be. I think I can. I think I'm going to put that walk in. I'm going to put this back, and I'm going to put the walk in. Never mind. I, I wasn't going to, but I think I'm going to. Changing your mind. Well, that's what I love about acrylics is that you can. Right? Now, see, in watercolor, you couldn't do that. No, or you wouldn't. Well, you'd, <laughs> you'd be have committed. To it off. You'd, yeah, you'd make a decision. What I love about acrylics is acrylics are, are the paint are the paint for people who hate to make decisions and just want to change their mind all the time. That that's what that's what I love about acrylics is you certainly can, right? And how are we doing on the Christmas village? Um, Christmas okay. Village, please. Yes, Christmas Village. Christmas Village. Oh, that's that's overtaking my tr tractor and farm. <laughs> John, they got you there, right? 
Yeah. Oh, they'll be out of it, though. Once, uh, once the f- snow's over, they'll want their farm. Yeah, the, tra- the Christmas Village is on the books. It didn't get done for Christmas this year, but we'll probably have it done sometime in the very near future. Yeah, we just ran out of time. We got so many. We got sort of overcommitted with all these different paintings. But there are, you know, because we get requests for things and we try to, you know, do all that stuff. All right, so here we go. All right, here we go. That's nice. Oh, pretty. Okay, so let's see a little more, more plopping here of the snow. Now, I think I need a tiny little brush, which I have. Right like this. We need some detail here, you guys. So let's take a... Uh, and then I'm going to dry something. Um, I think I want to just to suggest that there's little lights on this tree. So take some little light dots here like this. Oh, that's tricky. And just paint. A little, yeah, because it's hard to see in that window. But I want to suggest there's a little tree there like that. And we could put lights. Somebody asked me about lights all around the house. And could you put lights all around here like this? Yeah, you could. You probably want to do yellow. But you could put little, you know, colored lights around the house like this. You know, around the doors. I mean, it's your house to decorate. It's, this is a lot easier than making it out of flour and cookies and stuff, right? I promise you, that really looks tough and everything wants to fall off. <laughs> Just not fun at all. All right, so let's see. We need a little um, need a little lantern here, so just take a little bit of dark here on the lantern. You certainly do like putting those lanterns in. I like lanterns. That's a, yeah, maybe I think probably in all my street scenes, and I've got a lot of published street scenes, that probably have lanterns in just about every one of them. I like lanterns, and they all look the same. You can almost tell it's my painting because of the lanterns. There, see, little lantern. Isn't that cute? Looks great. I know. Let's come under here, and I don't know about that snow here. Let's just take that down a little bit. Okay, so let's just see. We didn't get the there. There's some steps. We're just going to sort of suggest some steps. Oh, here's an interesting comment. Ginger cook items were on eBay not long ago. I hope to run across a piece at a flea market. You know, it's interesting you folks mentioned that. Should we mention anything about that, Ginger? What? That we might be selling some of the paintings from our lessons? Oh, well, I guess you just mentioned it, didn't you? We're talking about that. We're talking about... We're, they're, they're pi- we're talking about that. Maybe we'll... Because basically we're getting... Running out of room. So we might. We might sell some. Not a lot, but we might sell some. And we'll, we'll have a store on our new site. John's building us a new site. Hopefully it'll be done in January. We're going to put some lessons... Um, as he giggles. Uh, yeah, we're going to put some lessons up there. Okay. So, all right, we did these crosswise. Do you see that? We sort of did that. I like that. Made a little bit of cross like that. And let's let's lighten up the, the window. I got that a little dark. Let's lighten up. Here's a little phthalo blue and, and white. And let's lighten up around this window here like this. Okay, like that. Just brighten it up a little bit. All right, now we've got some... Here's our snowman. And dibs on the mouse. I buy one. Ooh. Dibs on the mouse. Dibs yeah, on the that mouse. mouse is a cute one, isn't he? Oh. Uh, the little mouse? Yeah, yeah, the mouse is a great one. Um, I like the cat. But, you know, if there's a particular painting you wanted to give somebody for Christmas, it's not that we wouldn't sell one before then. You could just tell us and we'd come back with a quote. And if it was something you wanted to do, we'd, we'd get it to you. So if, if you go on our lesson, I'll go to Pinterest. You want to see all our lessons. You know, that's a good one, Pinterest. Here's a little bit of white here on the snowman, right, like this. He's got to have a little hat. i got to say, did you guys see the snow buddies? That was cute, right, that we did the little snow buddies like that? And I have to say, some of you decorated these cuter than me, right, like that. Now we're going to, you know, um, I mean, I loved that, you know, what some people came up with. So cute. Uh, really, really cute. Let's put a little... Let's put a little red scarf around him like this. That's a little cad red medium. Brighten that door up right here like this. Yes, this lesson will be staying up for those that are joining us late. Do not panic. Do not pass go. You yeah, have all the time in the world. Just, you know, it's, uh, this was sort of a, you know, kind of a request. You know, somebody wanted a lesson, you know, about, you know, like a little house here. So let's just do that like that. Here's our little snowman and John you and Ginger are doing to need a big binder to do bind oh we tried honey you don't even it know work. it didn't work yeah we were going to try to put all we the should, paintings we you know we looked at our um, six by nine whether six by eight six by what are the 
whatever size yeah, that is. Yeah, six by eight canvases, and we have it's like it's like a three foot stack. Yeah. You know, we couldn't even begin to put that in. We don't know what to do with them, so we said, why don't we sell them? We yeah. can buy more paint, do more lessons, create more of them. Yeah, and then actually they're going to be collector's items, and probably, you know, as as we get more and more famous, who knows? They might, you know. Yeah, they'll be signed by the artist and, um, and sealed you, with a kiss. What, well, are you going to kiss them? Though. Who's kissing these things? <laughs> Wait, where, where are you committing me? Nobody said nothing about kissing anything, right? What are you talking about here? Uh, you got to seal them with a kiss. Oh, you said you're going to... Um, Honestly, John. Really you're going to varnish them. I'm sorry. I, I got confused. I, I guess so, right? I guess so. K -k kissing. That, that very idea. That's what my mother used to say. Project that management. That's, yeah, that's a good idea. Project management software. I, I, I used to use that on our bigger projects. The problem is, every time we come up with an idea and I suggested it to Ginger, she starts off on it and something else comes up and it takes over. Yeah, we really, both of us have ADHD. It's really <laughs> tough to get anything done. <laughs> Oh, all right. It's I gotta tough. just. He's gonna get a diet here. There you go. Here you go, darling. You got a little diet. Now we gotta put the nose on him. I was gonna say it looks a little funny in the nose department. Well, I haven't done the nose yet. It's a carrot, so it's got. It be, is a carrot. carrot. It's gonna be a little orange thing sticking out here, like a little triangle, right? Like that. Just doop doop. You notice that I do two or three swings, almost like a golfer. You know, they'll do those swings and then they'll hit the ball. I do that with the brush. I'll come up here and I'll do two or three. And Just to I'll, make sure your angle's right. Yeah, and then you're I'll visualizing come in and it. Land it. it. You know, I visual. Yeah, and then I look where it's going. The brush is going to go, and it needs to be a little darker. I'm using one of these nifty little nail brushes, that you know you get uh, for seven dollars. You get like twenty or something weird like that. I said, but look at look what a great little nose I got on that guy. Aren't you impressed? Are you good? I don't think we have to do no no mulligan on that one. Yeah, I'm telling you. And but the nice thing about acrylics is, if you need to do something over again, you could. Let's just do a little. Uh, a little tassel. A little ta tassel and a little bit of a lighter headband like this. Let's just give him. Now you notice he's not smoking or anything. There's no cigars or any of that stuff. All right, so. It's supposed to be a pipe. Remember the good old days? We put yeah, well, like a pipe. Yeah, there's none of that either. There's none of that either. We're Can we get a close up that. of the lantern? Okay. Can't get any closer than I am. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to just... Um, John, when But we have another question. camera coming that will allow us to get closer. We need a little bit more... Uh, yeah, you sorry. Know. We have to wait. You know, here on the... Th on the there I am go. so mesmerized when I watch Ginger. Yeah, me too. I fall asleep sometimes. Thank you. I'm just glad I'm so entertaining <laughs> to you, John. Thank you so much. Wow. Well, sometimes I look up and I can't figure out where you're painting because I'm on the close-up and all of a sudden you're gone and you're up at the roof or something. All right, now I'm going to do some icicles now with a little brush around this window, Okay. Okay. I'm bring down some little shading icicles here on this side. Oopsie. Like this. I dropped my zoomer thingy. Oh, well, that's not good. Oopsie, dropped my mouse. Hmm. That's going right. to take so a just, week off to get organized. Again, you could spend, you know, you could spend a little more time on this. And that's, I'm not saying you shouldn't, right? But I'm just saying that, um, just put a little snow on the window ledge, right? Like that. Might be something like this. Let's see. Um. Oh, let's see. Back me out for you. Can you zoom me back out so I can... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, well, hold on a second. I can do that. Zoom I got the right button. I need to look at that. There you go. Okay. See, that's cute, right? It's coming along. Now, let's take some of the mixing white, which is like titanium white. This is called transparent mixing white. You need very little, like like a teaspoon. And you, you start with a clean brush. You're going to go for the chimney next? We're going to go ahead and put the smoke out of the chimney. That was... Thanks for that clarification. I always wondered if you would have smoked. Now we're going to start this way and then wiggle the brush and then. Oh, like perfect. That. See, That's perfect. A little bit of smoke coming out of the chimney. Yeah. There, like that. There you go. We'll bring it over this way. Nice. Right? And that's why you use the mixing white or the zinc white instead of the titanium. Yeah, now here's some zinc white, and I'll show you what happened. If we put a little zinc white over the top of the roof now, we wanted some of that blue to show through. We could lighten up the roof. Now, this is interesting. We could lighten up the roof without making it so white. You would still see a little bit of the blue. So that's another little trick too. If you need to soften something and you don't want it to be uh, you know, so obviously, and then let's just say want a little bit more white here, but not as white. Now see I'm coming up on the roof here and doing that here. And then I want to come, there's always a shadow side. Now I'm back into titanium. There's got to be a shadow side to the edge of the corners here on the snow. So then there would be a lighter part above it. And then here's my shadow, almost like like you would on a wave. 
like that. There'd be a shadow here. And let me just double check and see if I want to add a little bit more white somewhere like this. And then let's put a little bit more white here. John, can Ginger show the lantern on the chalkboard, please? Yes, I will show the lantern on the chalkboard. You betcha. She'd be happy to do that. And there she is. She's down somewhere. I didn't follow her. Oh, See, I'm reading the notes. Don't yell at me. All right. Getting the chalkboard out. Chalkboard. Let me zoom. You going to do it up in your lap again? Yeah, no, I'm going to do it up here. I'm going to just erase the uh, tree. All right. The All right. Chalkboard. Everybody get ready. Here we go. If I find some chalk. Okay, so here's this, right? So here's the thing. You start with a rectangle of yellow, right? And dry that. And then you can put a little orange in there too, just something, right? And then you come out like this, and then come out here and make like a little, little, um, this is dark right there. This is sticking out. You can have a little ball here if you wanted to, like that. And then, uh, then you come under here like this. And this is dark in here, a little ball here. And then you come here with some dark. This is dark here. This is dark here, this is dark, and all, of course, all this is dark up here, right? And you have your lantern. And it's pretty much easy, right? Really well, simple. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice when you do Again, we're working on a very small painting. Yeah, I mean... Depends on the size of your painting and on how much detail you can put in there. But if, if, and if it was a larger painting, you'd want to shade that where one side would be lighter than another, okay? You'd want to shade the, the lantern, like, for right. instance... You'd, you'd say this part was darker and this part was lighter and so forth. You'd shade it, you know, maybe even add some right, highlights to, to and give so it forth. Right, to give it the depth. But um, uh, honestly, if you Google lanterns, you know, that you want to just buy one for your house, they, they haven't changed the shape a lot in years. That's pretty much what you get. If you retire, keep those membership lessons, please. Well, our, pl our retirement plan is to keep doing this forever. We yeah. want to quit our other jobs and just do this. Yeah, and just do this. <laughs> and just do this. Okay, so... Um, I think I'm going to put a, um, it, usually snowmen have arms or something, and I, I didn't have any arms sticking up here. Well, that'd be like twigs. Yeah, I know, but I mean, which direction should they go? They should be doing something. Well, you know, one's going to be going towards the back. It's going to be going at an up angle, kind of like follow your roof line. What? Is that dry where you can use chalk? I don't know. Maybe. No. No. Maybe. You're saying one's going up. All right, let's go back to the chalkboard. Let's just do that. <laughs> let's design the arm. See, this is why we love chalk. Okay, so we've got the snowman like this, all right, like that. Okay, and here's the head. Yep. All right, hat. Okay. There you go. All right, snowman. A big, a big old right? body. So you're saying one's going to go up like this? Quite not not quite that high. More. More. At, see, that was like a two o'clock. Go closer to two two thirty. Down here. No, you had the right starting point. Where you were ending was too high up. Okay. And then how about one out here like this? Right. I think he should be having a, I think he should have a, a shovel. So, or a that'd be or good. The, the, the shovel the kid should be using for shoveling the snow. The, the, that's not there. Yeah. Actually, the shovel has to go on this side. Don't you think there should be a shovel on this side? Wait, is he left-handed? Is there a difference? I don't well, know. Well, is a left-handed snowman or a right-handed snowman? John, why do you make life hard for me? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying the way you're doing it. I'm not going to put any arms. She's just going to be armless. You know, <laughs> just you just may, you just may, I don't know. I'm going to put an arm like this, and he's going to have a shovel. I'm going to put the shovel, and then we'll figure out how he's going to hold it. How's that? Well, you can do it that way. Yeah, I'm gonna that's put a good the way shovel. to do it. Yeah, because I cannot determine how that would work. Now I'm going to take a little yellow. Okay, a little bit of shell. You know, put a little bit of yellow up here on the top of the shovel. And then should it be a shovel or a broom? It's a broom. Everybody knows it's a broom. There's no shovels. It's Gail, I'm far enough away from her she can't slap me. It's a broom. It's a broom, right? It's a broom. Well, typically it's a broom, but, you know. I, I, I like broom. I'm going with broom, kid. Brooms for witches. Okay, I got it. Uh, are, are you talking to who? <laughs> you know, just... Wow. Where is this house? John, do you paint with from? ginger? No, I do not paint with ginger. No, he just has a peanut gallery over there with the comments. I tell you what, this is what's Hey, going I'm on just trying here. to run the show here. You I know? know, you're doing a good job here. We no question about it. Look at there. You know how the brooms always have stuff like that. There's the broom, right? So then where how is his arm little arms gonna to attach to it? Like um maybe like this. There he's I am attached. working on my painting. I used to be watercolor. I did watercolors and she goes, Oh, that's the dark side. 
you need to come to the light side and work with acrylic. You can make mistakes and start over. All right, so we're going to say that's the, you know, probably wouldn't want it blue, but there's the arms. There's those sticks, right, like this. Here we go, like, like there. All right, so there's an arm. There's, that there's is a, there's one funky snow. arm. Well, you know what, you guys, when you do your arm, do it better. What can I say? Here's cruising for a bruising. No, I'm not. Hey, we'll be cruising shortly, though. Got another trip coming up. Yeah, so. We um, need vacation from each other. Oh, except we're going together. Really? Vaca what? That's just very unromantic. Vacation from each other? You're going to eat those words later. Man, I'm telling you what. You know, uh, wow. Goy. Some hostilities coming out of here. I'm hearing it, man. All right, so I'm going to put a little snow up here on the lantern, like that, like that. A little snow on the lantern. I like the, I, you know, let's see, put a little snow on the on the arm here too, like this. Because he hasn't been doing anything. Yeah, he's just like the kids laying around with snow. Okay, so that's uh. Should well, we, we used to when we lived in Aspen, you had this thing where that you, uh, we parked in the street. We didn't have any ours with out state parking. So we had to park on the street, and the snow guy would, when it would snow, the snow plow would come. All, All right. right. Oh, you're putting the, putting the stones back in, so the kids finally did come out and clean it up. Well, I just thought that was kind of nice to put them in like this, you know, to just, again, you know, try not to clone them. John, is this what Ginger used to hear in her ear, but we couldn't hear you? Yes. Pretty much. I try not to make her laugh too much, though. Yeah. Add absolutely. a doghouse for John. So, come on. All right, so back it up for a minute, please. I want to uh, see what I did. I can do that. I can push my button. There you are. Now, backing it up just a hair. And I think I had, as I recall, I see it now in this picture. I might as well do it. We had a, um, what did we have? We had a little brush we could do this with, which is where? Hard to know. Where did that little ruby satin silver angle brush go? Oh, here. There's a little There's a little tree right here, a little pine tree right here. Where? Where, where? Right here, right here. Right here. There's a little tiny pine tree right there. So we're going to put in a little green tree. A little bit of green. A little, yeah, they, uh, little well, thalo blue, a little green. We're going to make it a little brighter because it's closer, right? We're going to say, here's a little green tree right here. Oh, the between side. the two houses, kind of the corner yeah, of the one yeah, house. Yeah, yeah gotcha. I don't want to explain the two corners, so we're just going to do that, right? <laughs> You're just kind of hiding. I'm not really sure how these are even connected or what they're doing. That's right. So I'm not going to explain it. I'm just going to cover it up. But when you're not sure about it, when in doubt, cover it up, right? So now I'm going to just dry that real quick. Hold on a second. Lynn wants us something. Lynn, tell me exactly what you want. Ginger for Christmas, even if made after, could you make a big one? For us, not member only. Big one of which one? And she's going to draw it. You're going to draw it? Yeah, I'm going to draw it here. So, Lynn, you have a second to write that in. In caps. John, you missed my question, please. No, it's there, Lynn. You'll hear me eventually. Uh, all right, so I'm going to dry this right now, right? All right. She's going to be drying here. No warning, just started drying. Lynn, as soon as I see your question again, I need to know exactly which painting you're talking about. Unless it's further up there, I did miss it. I see the comment on watercolor is not as difficult as people think. No, it's not, but it takes more planning. I mean, I've seen Ginger take a complete drawing and a complete painting and start completely over. Because oh, yeah. she had a boo-boo. Well, as you saw her in that one, um, the snowman buddy one. That was a fun one. Yeah, snow buddies are a good one. And if you guys share these, this helps us too. You know, we want to keep these up, but, you know, we want to leave them up on YouTube and we want people to see them. We're kind of, we said this last night, it would be nice if people actually saw some of this stuff. Because, I mean, and, and relatively speaking, very few people see our stuff. But we're, we're making, we're trying, we're trying to get it out because I think a painting is fun. There's only two things, I want to say this, that they can scientifically prove that reduce, that absolutely... Um, reduces aging in the brain. One is composing music, which I think would be a little tough. If you'd never done any music in your life to suddenly figure out how to start composing, it would be a bit of a challenge, don't you think? Uh, but uh, the other one is, um, is painting. And you, can, you don't have to be good at it, you just have to do it. So if you did nothing else but paint every day for your mental health, like you meditate or exercise, that's a good reason. And somebody says, what are you doing? I'm, I'm saving my brain. How's that? Now we're taking a little titanium here. How many um, ginger snap cookies is this lesson that we're doing right now? 
uh, this is a one cookie lesson, really. Maybe a one and a half. One and a half cookie. One cookie Certainly. with crumbs. Yeah, because it's pretty. So we really explained this. It's just little. These are little, almost like monopoly houses, right? It's pretty simple. This is a pretty simple little lesson. Really, not a lot to this. You're just talking about mixing some blues. Let me just fix this in here. I wasn't happy. You're right. That yellow got a little um, a little dry, green. so it got yeah. a little green on me. So yeah. let me just let me just. So fix here, right that. now, you can see. Now, how are you going to fix that in watercolor? Go back with your white paint, and yeah, it's just not the same. Acrylic. So I'm going to say that there's some there's some light coming down here from the windows, and I want to kind of exaggerate that, like that. So I'm going to just take some titanium, then I'll dry that, and then I'll put a little bit of clean yellow over the top, maybe a little orange, like that. Could have a little pink color to it. We're having a request to do a big painting for YouTube at well, some we, time. We did a really big one last night. Show them the picture we did last night. It was great. The the holly was 16 by 20. We did big. Well, oh, I think they want bigger. And then we did a big one with the with the shoes. The the you guys saw the the blue jeans and red <laughs> shoes. That is one cool video, don't I think you think? They bigger. bigger than that? Bigger than that. Really? Well, I don't know how we'd get it up there. Unless we did it like I don't know how we'd get it up and load it. Here, this is what this is what we, we painted. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Just Move. wait. Just just wait. I gotta get back. <sighs> Okay. Hey, at least we're in the same studio. Yeah, all right. a start. All right, we'll show you last night's. All right, this is what we did last night. Can you zoom back out? There we go. Look, that's what we painted last night. All big. That's up there on YouTube right now. Every Tuesday, we're doing something called Learn to Paint with Ginger. I'm going to try and do a bigger canvas, and you can paint along very one, one cookie lesson, two cookie lessons, something very simple, some techniques that will be helpful. All hey, right? looking at your ear. What? You can and, turn into the camera and talk to us. Oh, where? Here. Okay. <laughs> ha. Well, it's confusing. He's got three of these. So, and, and then I have says, a little sticker on that one to tell you which one to look at. Yeah, and then he says, don't look at me, look at the camera. And then I've got this a monitor, and I keep wanting to look at myself with a monitor, like kind of a cat that goes by me here going, hi, you know. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that's me. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So we have these things, you know. We're we're trying to learn to paint with ginger on Tuesdays, and you know that'll be you know bigger a, a bigger canvas. We're going to at least do sixteen by twenties is what we're doing for those. Sixteen by twenties is what we're going to try and do. And the other other two days on on the k k k ginger crumbs and the um, ginger snaps. The ginger snaps. We're going to try and do smaller pictures or answer questions or do all kinds just things that are interesting. Answer your questions, and if there's something you really want to know, I mean, really want to know, and you forgot to tell me tonight. You can write us at gingercooklive.gallery, contact us, and then maybe we can answer that on the next show. That's really fun. But what we yeah. I'm going to ask for your help, you guys. I'm going to ask, you know, tell your friends about us, you know, help share these videos, help us get out. We really appreciate it. We thank you. We think that's really great. So I'm going to take this down now. And let's just finish up our picture, okay? And let me go back to the close-up. All right, so you can go back to the close-up. I'm going to take that uh, toothbrush again. Oh, we're going to go back to the toothbrush. Uh-huh. So you're going to put snow over all of it? Yeah, there's going to be a, there's sort of an overall feeling of snow on the whole thing now that I've got um, but this light part snow. done. Light but snow. a light snow. Light but a very snow. light snow. And um, I, I don't think I drowned the toothbrush. I wonder where I put it. Isn't that just great? Don't you love it? I'm looking at your palette. I don't see it down there. I Not mean, from what I can see. I mean, there's three feet of space here. I mean, where could it be? <laughs> <laughs> no matter where she is, she loses things. I see another one on the ground. I bet I could grab that. I don't know where this other one went. Oh, I John, I meant a nice one like members have, if possible. Uh, it drowned in the water. That's what happened to uh, it. Lynn, that's a good question. Um, we're going to have to think on that and how we want to do that. But what? we will. A big one like the members get. Because we want to really promote ourselves, honestly, if that's what we're going to end up doing. We've got to help pay for that. But we will definitely look into that. All right, I'm back on the big camera. All right, so where are you? Up here on the palette. Back to the palette. Take a little titanium white. I think you were just over there. And I'm going to got my toothbrush now. I've wet it, and then I'm going to tap it, tap it on the rag like this. All right. Now I'm going to very gently. You can back over to me. See it yep. very gently. See, I'm going to just very gently. There you go. This see, when you did the background, you pressed harder and deeper, right? Yeah, and this is just to suggest some Real light snow here on the house and then snow's good anywhere you think you flubbed it too just uh, add more snow. <laughs> hope you hide things yeah it's good it's good it's like this is the cheap guy's airbrush you know 
<laughs> Poor man's airbrush is a toothbrush. <laughs> okay, so here's my, here's my, let me come up here like this. Here's my sky like that. Here's our trees like this. All right, like this. And do this flat. Try not to do this vertical because you really run the risk of things dripping. And I would make darn sure that I dried this really well so in case it did drift, you could wipe it off, not wreck the whole picture and have to start over. Well, or start back a ways, okay? So there you see it. Now, I still want to put a little bit of the, I'm going to dry this, and I want to add a little tiny bit of, of highlight of yellow orange to the, the snow here where this happened. Okay, this is kind of cute, isn't it, John? Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, right, you definitely so want to dry, dry this time. I'm going to dry this. Okay. Okay. All right, do I have any questions that I missed? Uh, color review. Thank you so much. Yes, this painting will stay up, Rachel. And Rachel, um, we didn't see your membership come through. I haven't looked since dinner time, so I'm not sure about there. We are finishing up, folks. We appreciate you joining us. This is another one of our one-hour lessons done in two hours. This is a kind of a Gilligan's Island kind of thing. Remember the three-hour tour and they end up living on the island? I don't want you to end up <laughs> living in my studio with me. Gosh, is this woman ever going to finish this painting? My Lord, you know, is this ever going to happen, right? Come on, lady, finish the painting. Come on, how hard is it to do a little bit of snow? Well, you know, we get to talking and chatting, and it's like having you over for coffee or something, okay? Now, I've got a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow here, and I'm going to take a little bit of clean water, if I, assuming I had some over there. I'm going to just glaze this in front of the snow. See that with a little bit of water? Now look how pretty that is. See? And I'm going to suggest that there's this and then maybe a little bit yellower from front of that window. Maybe a little bit more yellow on the brush like this. Like that. Too much water. Just, just barely touch it. There you go. A little bit on our snowman like this. See? A little bit on the snowman. Here we go. Front down on the walk here. Where's the... Where's our light coming from down here like this and maybe a little tiny bit of yellow over here in front of the windows just a hair here and then i want a little yellow on the windows too this is one of those little dumb tricks that they all do here's a, little, a dumb trick well i don't know it seems a little gimmicky but that's what's done okay that's too much so but we dried it right so we can just take that right off great perfect there you go a little bit of yellow a little bit there a little more yellow here, a little bit. Wake everybody up. Everybody's getting up here. I've got more yellow. I've got to do. All right. So there. That, now zoom us back out. Zoom us back out. Yeah. Zoom us I back out. I got the out. zoomer. There we go. So now look how that's sort of cute, right? And a little bit stronger right here. Maybe we'll catch the tip of this tip of this tree right here. Or maybe it's kind of coming from the window right here, like that, like that. Where else would it's maybe this one too? Here by the house or something like that. Here we go. So I would say that there's our picture, John. I think that was fun. Now, you know, and you could make this bigger. You could. And, and just at kind of a little holiday scene, um, you know, a little gingerbread house that you created. And again, a dormer would be really cute. Up, you know, add another element to this roof, another little uh, dormer or something, another little roof here. I would just say Google some uh, cute little gingerbread houses. And oh, that'd just, be cute with a little dormer in it. Yeah, c copy, the, copy that. You could, it's easy enough to do. Uh, you could put a little lantern, you know, you can have another little lantern along the walkway here, a little sign here somewhere that, you know, I'm a big one on signs. You, know, you saw that from the snow, snow buddies. Did you guys like the snow buddies? You know, snow buddies you could be living here, a little sign, so forth, and, and make that a personal uh, card for somebody, personalize the house for them, things you could do. I think great fun. And next week we'll be doing more fun things. And we never know. I would tell you what we're doing next week, but who knows? I, we we usually don't know until time to go live. Yeah, any more questions we can answer before we say goodnight? I think this was kind of fun. We kind of went on. Never mind. Says, awesome. Nope, I think we are good. We're good? All right. Now, remember about, you know, pine, you know, snow falling straight down, hitting the tops. Make sure you keep in the dark, dark uh, green boughs underneath. Look at the different kinds of pine trees. You know there's different ones because the Christmas tree lot has different prices for different types of trees. They're not all the same. But the message tonight is let's avoid cloning. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. The painting came out great, Ginger. Thank you so much to hear your wisdom. Oh, that's going to go to her head. I shouldn't read those out loud. Awesome. Thank you both. 
Never mind, I took a load. I always got that. Okay, night everybody, and we will see you next time. Comments and likes. Please subscribe, by the way. Did anybody mention that? Um, look at the camera and plead. Did look anybody at... please? <laughs> is it look at the camera and plead? Don't Did look at me. <laughs> that you, you know, subscribe, tell your friends, share, likes. Those are the things that the, that the, the search engine looks at when they decide whether or not they'll tell anybody else about this video. There you go. Uh, and where the heck is Sammy? Sammy is still in his cowboy outfit. He will be coming on next week. I'm sure we can get him to come out. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you next week, 7.30, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, live with Ginger Cook. And we can surprise you sometime during the week, and just that's why you have to subscribe, because you never know when we could show up. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.